So have you done a lot of research into geopolymers or other set of polymers, like alternatives to concrete in 3D printing? Um, so I wouldn't say I wouldn't say a lot of research, but we've definitely uh, done research. I would say we what we specialize in is more how do we use the technology to its full potential. Um, so uh, so for example, like for 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 three D printing, what we are really working on is how can we make overhangs? Uh, like how can we like uh, how can we make architecture that uh, follows the rules of overhangs as the technology allows it right now, because I think it is inevitable if you want to, like, if you want to, if, if, if 3D printing technology needs to fulfill its true potential, we need overhangs, uh, and we need to be able to print not horizontally, but going horizontally as well. Mm -hmm. Um, so we are, we are working a lot on that and figuring out different like we are very much on the geometry side right so yeah. what can we do with the geometry that 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 um, uh, that allows for that and then of course all of a sudden you realize that looking back at old architecture like masonry architecture and all these like gothic architecture and and and, and uh, uh, ceilings of churches and all of these things there's actually a lot of inspiration because it's it's a stacked geometry in a way like it's it's all That's pentium true. yeah yeah so uh, yeah, and that's and that's also cool because that kind of brings back. So when you look at something like that, I think the reason why a lot of it looks beautiful is because it follows rules in nature, mm -hmm. right? It follows a parabolic uh, a curve, or it follows a, a, another curve that you can a just golden see ratio the... or something exactly. like things that you don't really know, but there's actual intention behind the design. Yes, yeah. and you can just you can just almost like if it's done correctly, you can just read the the physics of it like intuitively. Um, so those are some of the things that we're looking at. Um, and I wouldn't say that we are, we are not material experts. Uh, we really try to just talk with the material experts of the world. Um, but yeah, so, but we are looking a lot into uh, to polymers right now. And the reason is we are doing our next habitat design. Uh, so Lunark, we finished it one year ago. There's an there's an exhibition at the Danish Architecture Center in Denmark. Uh, it just opened two weeks ago, where we brought back the habitat from Greenland and put it inside an exhibition hall. So you can actually step inside the habitat and see what it's like to live on four and a half square meters and That's it still cool. smell. It's, when, yeah, and it, yeah. How long is it going to be up? Uh, for like eight months or something. Uh, awesome. Until October. I cannot okay. calculate how many months it is, but I think it's like eight months or something. Um, October 20, 2022. Um, yeah, and of course, there's the entire, like the habitat is the centerpiece, but there's entire uh, explanation of our process. How did we go from idea to final uh, habitat and all the prototypes in between and how, why does it look like it does and, and all of this thing. Um, but yeah, so that, the, but the, that habitat was a year ago. Now we have uh, for the last half year designed our next habitat. So we are taking all the things that we learned from Greenland um and then put it into our new design and, uh, and is that the rosenberg that's the rosenberg habitat yeah exactly so where did you come up with that name <laughs> that's uh, <laughs> yeah so the road that, that's that's because the, the client is uh is is uh, an an old uh, boarding school called the institute of the rosenberg and and i'm sure i'm butchering the name it's a client in switzerland and i'm sorry uh, if, if they're listening right now um but uh, but so it's a habitat that uh it's it's another simulated habitat but it's used for uh education and research so it'll be a simulation missions but much shorter periods so not two months like me and Carl did. most people cannot fit that into their schedule of their life uh, so it'll be shorter shorter trips uh, of, of up to uh, one week at a time um but yes but but that's uh it's a pretty it's a small footprint um it's about uh, uh it's about six square meters in footprint um but it's six and a half meters tall so it's it's almost standing like a tower um and uh, we're going to 3d print the exterior shell uh out of uh, uh thermoplastics uh out of some kind of uh, polymer and right now we are in the process of uh, defining that polymer and what kind of fibers we are putting in it to get the properties that we need. So I cannot, I cannot go too much into detail of it, but um, but it will be like 
it will be the tallest polymer structure uh, that is 3D printed as far as I can see. I've been looking all around the world and I cannot find anything that's taller. So I, I believe it is, but please correct me if I'm wrong, then like send me an email and say, that's not true, Sebastian. Um, so the structure itself has these like carvings on the outside that kind of look like yeah. fingerprints that have gone into clay. Um, yes. So what's the reasoning behind that? So um, it's okay. So uh, first of all, it's, it's important to explain that when, if you send anything into outer space, uh, the, the, the structure will experience the vacuum of outer space. And that's fine if there's nothing living inside of it, but as long as there's anything living inside of it, you need to create artificially an atmospheric pressure or close to, an, to one, one atmospheric pressure. Um, so to withstand that pressure inside the volume, uh, you need to have a shell that obviously is airtight, that's, it's a pressure volume, but that also needs to be strong enough to, to keep one, one atmospheric pressure. Um, so what we did with our structure was we, we, did, we used topology optimization. So the entire surface um, is optimized and only added reinforcement exactly where it's necessary to withstand that. But it's taking into consideration all the different, like we have openings for the airlock for humans to go in and out. We also have some windows and all of that, of course, changes the forces on the structure. Um, and uh, the topology optimization scripts that we built for it takes all of that into account. And then it gives you like the optimal surface structure to do that. And what's interesting with 3D printing is that it would have been extremely difficult to machine, yeah. you know, these, this structure with any other ma manufacturing method. I'm sure it's possible you could do like, you could do like molding and casting of, of like a glass fiber or carbon fiber shells. And but that would be incredibly labor intensive. And some of the shapes that we have developed wouldn't be possible to get. Uh, so, so that's why we looked to 3D printing. And we basically just looked all around the world and we found a company called Ingersoll who had, who was one of the only companies in the world that was, that had a printer large enough uh, to do a project like this. Uh, so they are collaborating with us, with the printing facility in Milano. And, uh, and uh, yeah, and, and, and they, they have all the, the technical know-how of, of, of printing a panel this size. That's fascinating. And you said this is going to be installed in Switzerland? Yes, so uh, so similar to uh, like it, like none of our architecture, yeah, so our 3D printed concrete house, that's the only piece of architecture that's in Denmark. Everything else has been like in the desert and in the Arctic and like in Vietnam and now Switzerland. Um, and uh, so we are getting pretty used to like figuring out how to ship these kind of things. So, uh, so the habitat is made in, in, in three different sections and then they can be taken apart. It's in pretty big sections, so you need some machines for this, but the habitat can be taken apart and then it can be shipped on a large truck uh, to Switzerland and then we will assemble it on site. Um, yeah, but only three parts. Uh, so, so it's not that much assembly, it's, it's almost- uh, yeah, Like slots in place on site almost. Exactly, yeah, yeah, exactly.